is Let Us Pray, The Wifford's Tale, by Marina Fitch and Mark Buds. Feeding time again. The crunch and snap of bones resonated through the walls of the Wifford Uquil's room as Jabba's pet Rancor snacked on its latest morsel. Uquil paced his stark room. Hunt's lust vibrated through his tall, golden-furred frame, wrinkled his broad snout. His tusks tingled, even though it had been several hours since Jabba dropped the Twi'lek dancer into the Rancor's pit. The screams had ceased long ago, but Yaquil couldn't stop salivating. The savoury aroma of fresh blood warmed the pit of his stomach. The warmth wouldn't last long. Yaquil snarled low in his throat. Next time, it might be Yaquil the Rancor feasted on. Jabba grew bored so easily. What if the novelty of employing a former lover of the Wifford crime lord Lady Valerian to ferret out conspiracies wore thin? No doubt, the kind of reminder Jabba intended when he gave Yaquil quarters this close to the pit, if Jabba suspected Yaquil still worked for her. Owner of the Lucky Despo, Lady Valerian was Jabba's most powerful rival. Not only was her nightclub the most successful in Mos Eisley on the entire planet of Tatooine, she siphoned business from Jabba as easily as she sipped Sulliston gin, as easily as the Rancor would sip the marrow from Yaquil's bones if he was discovered. Yaquil snorted. All he had to do was keep his tusks clean for a few more days. Then the Rancor and his devoted keeper, Malakili, would be gone, free of Jabba. Yaquil had helped arrange their escape with Lady Valerian. One of the few good things he'd been able to do behind Jabba's back. That and bribing the kitchen boy, Flemon, to lace Jabba's snack tank of freckled toads with slow-acting poison. A little too slow, by the look of things. Another bone snapped. Yaquil's claws tensed. He smoothed the fur bristling around his neck, raised by the scent of the Twi'lek's blood and the hunt lust surging through him. But was he hunter, or prey, or both? He stopped pacing and glanced at the room, barren except for his sleeping pallet. Built by the Bomar monks, the room's stark ascetic reminded him of the rock and bone shelters of the, his homeworld Tula. Two ceremonial trophies hung on opposite walls, a necklace of mass motif dipped in poison and the skull of a young bamphar he had brought down one night with his bare claws. He was a hunter, not some weak ice puppy that sat back and waited for death to come. He jerked open the door and slipped into the hallway. A pain-filled moan issued from one of the rank cells. A Gamorian guard grunted as he pushed past Yaquil, bleary with sleep or too much solace and gin. Yaquil stroked the spiky hairs along his lower lip. Lady Valerian liked Jin. If only he were back at the Lucky Despo. Two days ago, when it looked like everything was going according to plan, it had seemed a possibility. His falling out with Lady Valerian would end and they could finally stop pretending. That was before the note. Someone knew he was bribing Fleming. He had already paid a hefty 10,000 credits to keep the blackmailer silent, but it was only a matter of time before Jabba found out. How much time? That was the question. The crunch and snap of bones stopped. Blast. Sweat beaded Yaquil's forehead and long browed broad snout. When was the last time he'd been cool? He wiped his face with the back of his paw. Strands of fur clung to the sweat. He grimaced, shedding again. Tatooine's dry, sweltering heat sucked the energy out of him. What he wouldn't give for a couple of minutes in one of the Lucky Despo's ice saunas. Something scuttled past him. One of those spider-like droids, enlightened by Omar monks, used to ferry around their pickled brains. The glass jar winked in the dim light. Then droid and brain disappeared around the corner. Yaquil snarled in disgust and hurried on, stopping outside the Rancor's pit. 
The inner gate stood slightly open, as he'd known it would. Malachili was cleaning the outer cage. The scent of blood was stronger here. Yaquil closed his eyes and breathed deeply. The intoxicating scent soothed his taut nerves, taking the edge off his repressed frustration. If he could just track down the blackmailer and kill him. A foot scraped on the stone floor near him. His eyes snapped open. One hand jerked up, claws extended, while the other hand reached for his vibro blade. Hey, it's just me, Malachili said softly, stepping out of the cage of shadows. Sweat glazed his bare chest and heavy arms. He patted Yaquil's shoulder with a black gloved hand. Easy, you're stiffer than an Imperial Stormtrooper. Been a bad night, Yaquil said, letting go of his vibro blade. Tell me about it, Malachili said, adjusting his black headband. His eyes narrowed in his thick, doughy face. Something's in the air. Even my friend here is jumpier than usual. This place is a tomb, Yaquil said. Even the living are dead inside these walls. Might as well stuff our brains in jars. Yeah, but the monk's brains aren't dead. Malachili leaned closer to him. Listen, I heard something I think you should know. Yaquil tensed. What? This afternoon, Bib Fortuna tried to get Jabba to throw you into the pit. Thinks it will be an interesting contest. Yaquil peered at Malachili. What did Jabba say? I tried to talk him out of it. You'd inflict too much damage before my friend killed you, but Jabba wasn't convinced. He said he'd give it some thought. So, I have a little time, Yaquil said. Malachili nodded. A little. With luck, we'll both be out of here soon. Alive, I hope, Yaquil said, curling the corners of his lips back around his tusks in a smile. Malachili smiled. I'll let you know if I hear more. Thanks, Yaquil said. Gnashing his tasks, Yaquil hurried back to his room. Things were moving much too fast, forcing his hand. Jabba's increasing coolness, the blackmailer. And now, Bib Fortuna's plotting. Time to get Flemin to increase the dosage of slow poison. The sooner Jabba was reduced to a vat of gibbering slug jelly, the sooner Yaquil could return to Lady Valerian. He'd wanted to increase the dosage earlier but he'd been afraid someone would notice a sudden change in Jabba. Now, he could no longer afford the luxury of caution. Yaquil slipped into his room and went to the string of mass motif teeth hanging on the wall. Lifting the necklace from its peg, he slipped it over his head. Luckily, most people, including Jabba, considered him a mindless brute with a taste for crude jewellery. No one suspected the teeth had been dipped in poison. Yaquil started at a low mechanical warble outside his door. His nostrils flared, crinkling at the acrid stench of oil and metal. A droid. The claws of Yaquil's right hand curled involuntarily around the grip of his vibroblade, then slowly relaxed. An assassin droid wouldn't announce its presence. The warble repeated. Yaquil yanked open the door. The maintenance droid... A blue U2C1 housekeeping model chirped and took a step back. Both of its flex tube arms quivered. With a whine, it sucked in air through the stiff brush at the end of its left arm and the upholstery attached on its right. I hope I'm not disturbing you, it said tinnily. I've been instructed to clean this room. Yaquil stepped aside, allowing the droid to enter. Another calculated nuisance on the part of Jabba or one of his servants. Most likely Salacious Crumb. That drool-lapping Kowokian lizard monkey probably scavenged the droid's waste tank for between-meal snacks. Yaquil sneered. He'd love to program the cleaning droid to suck up that cackling little rubbish heap. Please close the door, the droid said. This won't take long. Yaquil grumbled. The droid's right arm snaked out to sweep the floor. The loud whine grated on Yaquil's nerves. He reached for the doorknob. I have a message, the droid said. Yaquil hesitated. A message? From a friend. The droid paused, but left its vacuum running. I know who's blackmailing you. 
Meet me on the Citadel roof at sunrise, and I'll give you his name. The rampart on top of the guest quarters. Yaquil had gone up there more than once to escape the press of the walls and drink in the cool night air. I have been instructed to wait for your response, the droid said. Yaquil's hackles rose. A clever ruse by Jabba to lure him out. If the message had been sent by a friend, why the secrecy? Why not just give him the name of the blackmailer? Obviously the person wanted something more from him. But what? Money? Or to enlist him in another plot to kill Jabba? There were certainly enough of those. Yaquil had only leaked a fraction of them to Jabba. Only the least promising. How will I recognise him? Yaquil asked. You won't, the droid said. You'll recognise what he's wearing. Yaquil exhaled sharply. Tired of playing these games. If it turned out to be a setup, he could always claim that he was doing his job, following up on a suspect, for Jabba. Yaquil wet his lips. Yes, that was the way to handle it. A thrill ran through him, not unlike the one he got while tracking an ice puppy, or a sea hog back on Tula. I'll be there, Yaquil said. He ducked into the hall and up the stairs to Jabba's main audience chamber. Jabba and his minions dozed on the crime lord's dais. The band played on, melodic jazz and dense smoke cavorting in a sinuous dance of sound and smell. Frozen in carbonite, Han Solo stared at him from the display alcove. Yaquil eased past the bandstand, skirting the trapdoor to the Rancor's pit. He caught a glimpse of Malakili through the grating, still cleaning the pit, while the Rancor gnawed contentedly on a wet bone. The Rancor belched. The band missed a beat, but picked up quickly, as if trying to drown out the disturbance. Jabba opened one eye, then closed it again, clearly unconcerned. His tail twitched, a sure sign that he was wide awake. Even the new gold droid beside him stood alert ready to translate the orders of its master. Bib Fortuna slept on the floor, next to Salacious Crumb, who was snoring loudly. Not even sleep could silence the little garbage disposal. Yaquil descended the steps to the kitchen. Someone watched from a darkened recess. One of the Bomar monks that still lurked in the palace. The monk's broad round face was moon pale, his twisted nose casting a craterish shadow along one cheek. Yaquil scowled and picked up his pace. He slowed near the kitchen door. The scent of bruised goat grass wafted from the darkened room. He crept closer. Dim light spread from one of the inner rooms. He pricked up his ears. Two voices rose in argument. Ri Yi's perpetual slur and the guttural grunts of a Gamorian guard. Hiding behind the doorframe, Yaquil peered into the room. Goat grass littered the kitchen like feathers from a fresh kill. Even more unsteady than usual, Ri Yi's teetered over a body sprawled beside a broken crate. Ri Yi's free eye stalks trembled as they tried to focus on the Gamorian. The guard glowered at Ri Yi's, then waddled forward and bent to look at the corpse. Ri Yi shifted slightly, giving Yaquil a clear view. Flemin, the kitchen boy. Yaquil's foot claws curled reflexively, digging into the stone floor. His heart hammered in his ears, blotting out the guard's pig-like grunts and Ri Yi's drunken bleats. What had that goat-faced free-eyed bar rag done? Clenching and unclenching his claws, Yaquil quelled the urge to stomp forward and rip out the thieving grunt's throat. Yaquil growled under his breath and drew back. Better to wait. He could hunt the murdering drunk later. There wasn't anything he could do now, not without arousing the guard's suspicion. He swallowed, backing away from the kitchen. He retreated the way he came, hurrying past the darkened recess he stopped. The Bomar monk was gone. Yaquil's mind raced. Maybe Ri Yi's had not murdered the kitchen boy after all. Maybe it was the monk. Flemin might have sent the droid to Yaquil after discovering the monk's blackmail plot. The monk found out and killed Flemin. But why would a Baomar monk blackmail Yaquil? 
He suspected the monks wanted Jabba out of their citadel as much as anyone more. But if Jabba found a discontented Bomar monk to work as a spy for him, hardly surprising. In fact, it would be more surprising if he hadn't. But why not simply turn your quill over to Jabba? Your quill let out a breath and hurried up the stairs to the audience chamber. Lady Valerian would know what to do. The last time he'd contacted her, she told him not to call until Jabba was a chortling, mindless slug. But without Fleming, that might take a while. Besides, she needed to know what was going on. The band was pacing it in when your quill weeds passed them. The rancor snored in its pit, and even Jabba's tail had slowed its pensive river. Yaquil curled his claws to keep from touching the necklace of mass motif. teeth. He averted his eyes from the tank of live toads. Climbing the stairs to the guest rooms, Yaquil passed the masked bounty hunter who had brought in the Wookiee and threatened to blow up the palace with a thermal detonator earlier that evening. Yaquil smiled, a fine subtle display of hunt lust, truly admirable. The bounty hunter nodded once, then continued down the stairs, no doubt on his way down to the dungeon to taunt the Wookiee. Yaquil's nostrils twitched. Something about the bounty hunter smelled odd. Out of place. There was no time to wonder about it now. Yaquil raced up the stairs. He panted, his lungs aching with the still hot air. Doors lined both sides of the curved guest wing. Most open to reveal empty rooms. In the past they had served as individual sleeping and meditation chambers for the monks. But now the mouldy breath of neglect filled the hallway. Jabba had few guests at any given time. Even two or three tended to nurture his pampered paranoia. Glancing over his shoulder, Yaquil crept to an empty room near the stairwell leading up to the roof. He shut the door softly behind him. Yaquil went to the window slit in the far wall. Peering out at the night sky, he fled his nostrils, sucking in the soothing breeze. The cool air smelled faintly of dust. A whiff of goat grass clung to the breeze, no doubt rising from the kitchen. A delicious shiver travelled through him. Blood stoned, the wind tonight too. He turned from the window and pried the cap from the pommel of his vibro blade. Sliding a hollow projection tube hidden in his vibro blade, he set it on the thick window sill, making sure the tiny lens in the side faced him. He pushed the transmit button and waited for Lady Valerian to respond. It shouldn't take long. She didn't go to bed until dawn, when the lucky despo closed for a short time to get ready for the next day's customers. A light flashed on the cylinder. Half a second later, the lens projected a hologram of the entry hatch and bulkhead where Lady Valerian conducted business. Part of the Lucky Despo's charm was that it had once been a cargo hauler. Lady Valerian had used the spaceship's decor to create an atmosphere comfortable to spacers and exotic enough to lure planet-bound clientele. A low, wistful growl rumbled in Yukua's throat and into the middle of the hollow stepped Lady Valerian, dazzling as always. Her curled mane tinted a burnished red, spilled down the sides of her face. She had painted her tusks blue, and wore a gold ring on the left one. Earrings glittered on her ears. A wave of longing spread through Yaquil. His nostrils tingled with the remembered allure of her pheromone perfume, the softness of her fur against the flat of his nose, the way she snuffled in her sleep. You quill, she said, waving one claw polished hand. The blare of music and sabbat plays from the Star Chamber Cafe tinkled in the background. How wonderful to see you. Oh, my little Massmont, how thin you are. You've been shedding again. Well, now that you've completed that little task you promised to do for me. Not yet, my little ice tiger he said. He clucked his tongue. There's a problem. I need to talk to you. Lady Valerian's eyes narrowed. What kind of problem, dearest? The massive hand of a whiffed male reached from the edge of the hologram and offered her a Sullustan gin ice blaster. Yaquil's throat tightened. A male? 
in Lady Valerian's chambers. Your quill, Lady Valerian said. Darling. Your quill cleared his throat. Probably just a servant. I'm being blackmailed, he said. Someone knows the kitchen boy was poisoning the toads. He was killed minutes ago. Lady Valerian removed the sip tube from her lips. What are you trying to tell me, dearest? Does Jabba know you're trying to poison him? Not yet, Yaquil said, wishing he could be that certain. Lady Valerian sighed. Then why are you calling, darling? Please get to the point. I have other business to attend to. Yaquil's nose flaps flared. Lady Valerian's eyes teared under her worried brow. And this is much too dangerous. If someone caught you, my precious. Yaquil leaned toward the hollow. I need help. I need to find out who killed the scullion. Do you have any idea who killed him, or who might be blackmailing me? There's a Bomar monk. A deep laugh rumbled through the palace walls below, drowning the words. Jabba. Yaquil stiffened. The fur on his spine prickled with a rush of fear. Lady Valerian's eyes widened. Yaquil? I won't fail, Yaquil said. Reaching for the projection tube, as another laugh reverberated through the walls. He severed the uplink and slammed the tube into the grip of his vibroblade. Muscles taut, Yaquil held his vibroblade ready in front of him. He listened for even the slightest sound, the scraping of feet on stone, or the rattle of weapons. Silence. Were the guards waiting for him in the hall? Better to face death head on. He opened the door, expecting a blaster shot or the slash of a vibro axe. Nothing. The corridor was empty. Yaquil dashed toward the far stairs. Distant voices, human voices, drifted from Jabba's audience chamber, punctuated by the unmistakable cackle of salacious crumb. Yaquil took the steps two at a time. Just before he reached the bottom step, something caught his eye. He drew back. The carbonite slab. Empty. Yaquil's tail twitched. The human pleading of Jabba must be Han Solo. But that was impossible. A person stood a better chance stepping out of the heart of a tool and iceberg than breaking free of Carbonite's freezing grip. Another round of laughter filled the audience chamber. A cacophony of voices joined Jabba's bass chuckle. Hugging the wall, Yaquil peeked into the room. The bounty hunter, a human female, stood helmetless beside Solo facing Jabba. Yaquil hissed in surprise. A human. That's what the smell had been. Solo's head bobbed and wobbled, his eyes unfocused and not quite fixed on Jabba. I'll pay triple, he said, as the Gamorrean guards dragged him off. You're throwing away a fortune here. Don't be a fool. Jabba smiled, then turned to leer at the human female with the same cruel lechery he had gazed on the Twi'lek dancer. His slimy lips gleamed with spittle. Yaquil slid back into the shadows and quietly sheathed his vibroblade. It wouldn't look good if a guard stumbled across him lurking in the stairwell with his weapon drawn. He took a deep breath and let it out slowly. The crumb's hysterical screech covered Yaquil's retreat up the stairs. There was still time, as much time as Jabba remained preoccupied with the human female. Yaquil trotted down the corridor to the guest room. That would be safer than his own quarters if Jabba suspected him. He closed the door and sat on the floor facing the window slit, his vibro blade lying across his legs. Framed by the slit, the night sky had faded from back to deep, black to deep blue. It would be dawn soon. He stared at the stone wall opposite him. Jabba had to know, why else would Flemin be dead? The blackmailer, the monk, Lady Valerian warned him about, had told Jabba about the poison toads, then killed the kitchen boy to prove his loyalty. Yaquil grimaced. Jabba was always demanding proof of loyalty. Yaquil had been forced to hunt and kill his own servant in a display of fidelity. Fortunately, that great sack of nearsighted slug gel couldn't tell a whiffed tusk from a greater mass mot tooth. Footsteps tramped heavily down the hall. Yaquil leapt to his feet, drawing his vibroblade. 
The thick swinish grunts of several Gamorian guards echoed in the corridor. Holding his breath, Yuquil stepped behind the door. The guards lumbered past. Yuquil listened till their footsteps faded, then sank down onto the floor again. He slid the vibroblade in at sheath. Lady Valerian had given him the weapon. Lady Valerian, for whom he risked his tusks daily, and who had a strange male in her chamber. Just a servant, or a rival. Yuquil's mane bristled. Perhaps this blackmailer had more to do with Lady Valerian, and less to do with Jabba. Perhaps Lady Valerian had tired of waiting for him to act, and decided to rid herself of the potential embarrassment of an inept spy in Jabba's palace. She had always despised foolish weak males. Look at Dwop, her first husband. The fool had been too stupid to turn down a bounty offer by Jabba during their wedding reception. Lady Valerian had shipped him back to Tula in a box. Yaquil was no fool, and he was not weak. The slow poison had been Lady Valerian's idea. Let's not be too obvious, my sweet, she crooned. Yaquil stared at the vibroblade. Beautifully crafted, the finest weapon credits could buy. Was he jumping to conclusions? Still, she knew about the monk. Slamming and banging echo echoed from the direction of the hangar. Yaquil listened at the door, then stalked to the window slit. In the grey light, people were scurrying about, preparing Jabba's Ubrikian sail barge. Evidently, Jabba was planning a trip to the Great Pit of Carcoon sometime in the near future, probably to feed Han Solo and the Wookiee to the Sarlacc. Was Yaquil on the menu too? He shivered, then peered across the sands at the welt of brightness along the horizon. One of Tatooine's two suns was rising. The light spread slowly like water, dousing the glitter of stars. He had better head up to the roof to meet the informant. Yaquil unsheathed his vibroblade and opened the door. Someone shuffled down the hall. Yaquil waited in the doorway and listened to the dry whisper of cloves. Instead of diminishing towards the stairs to the main audience chamber, the steady shuffle grew louder. A shadow materialised around the curve in the hall. It passed an open door. A pale round face with a twisted nose peered warily into every shadow. The same monk who had hidden in the recess outside the kitchen. He quill eased into the room and waited for the monk to pass. The man's loose robe swayed with each step. Light from the partially open door illuminated the side of his face. His head and face were devoid of all hair. Anger surged through your quill. He narrowed his eyes, deepening the shadows in the hall. His pulse throbbed in his claws as his chest tightened around the beating of his heart. Your quill stepped into the hallway. The monk paused and turned, his hands hidden in the folds of his robe, a robe ample enough to conceal a blaster. Or a vibroblade. There you are, the monk said. His gaze flitted to the vibroblade. Let's go to the roof, friend, where we can speak freely. The vibroblade trembled in Yaquil's hand. He tightened his grip. What do you want from me? The monk glanced nervously down the hall. This is not a good place to talk. It's too easy to be overheard. Trust me. You were there when the kitchen boy was killed, Yaquil said unmoving. I saw you. There was nothing I could do, the monk said. His hand shifted under his robes. Before the monk could free his hands, Yaquil slashed upwards with the vibroblade. The blade sliced through the robes in the man's chest. The monk stared at Yaquil, a look of surprise on his face, then toppled forward onto the floor. The pressure in Yaquil's chest eased. At last he could breathe again. He took a deep breath filling his lungs with the ripe giddy scent of fresh blood. Sheaving his vibroblade, he knelt down and rolled the body over. The monk gurgled. Flemin. Black. Mailer. He rasped, then shuddered and died. Flemin. Yaquil frowned and leaned closer. Something winked in the dim light. An earring. Yaquil turned the monk's head to get a better look at the chartreuse gemstone set in a single gold ring. His blood went cold. You'll recognise what he's wearing, the cleaning droid had said.
The earring was Lady Valerian's. Yaquil had given her the pair the day after their first night together. She growled with delight and clipped the earrings on immediately. Yaquil unclipped the jewel from the monk's earlobe. The monk had been working for Lady Valerian. Yaquil flexed his claws around the earring. What was he going to tell her? A grunt filtered down the corridor. Yaquil grabbed the monk's robes and dragged the body toward the nearest guest room. The monk's hands fell free of the robes. His right hand clutched a thermal detonator, the one the bounty hunter had used to threaten Jabba. Yaquil snatched it from the stiffening hand. Whatever he had done, here was a chance to redeem himself. Heavy footsteps accompanied another grunt. Yaquil glanced over his shoulder. No one yet, but the person was definitely headed his way. He looked around wildly. Where could he hide the detonator? His belt pouch seemed too small. Yaquil crammed the detonator into the pouch anyway, praying he wouldn't trigger it. The pouch bulged, refusing to close. Yaquil smoothed his fur over the pouch's gap, his shoulders rising as the approaching stranger called out, or rather squealed out. Yaquil turned slowly, forcing himself not to smirk, and looked up into the face of a squat Gamorrean guard. Stupidity on the hoof. The guard carried Fleming's dead body over one shoulder. This must be the same Gamorian who had been talking to Reyes in the kitchen. The guard trudged up to him, wheezing and snorting. He uttered a few more incomprehensible grunts, then looked at Yaquil expectantly. Yaquil's mind raced frantically. Just how stupid were these guards? If this brute could believe Reyes, he'd believe anything. The Gamorian grunted impatiently. One of the squeals sounded like a dead. Yaquil stood. He's not dead. He's, uh, meditating. Gone into a deep trance, pondering the imponderables. The guard bent over the monk. He wrinkled his nose at the blood and snuffled a short, bewildered snort. Yaquil wet his lips. The blood? He wanted to see if he'd reached the final stage of enlightenment. He decided to do a little testing on his own to see if he was ready before asking his friends to put his brain in the jar. The guard's eyes narrowed. He grunted and pointed first at the monk's head, then at his chest. Yaquil shrugged. That's where their brains are, in their chest. It makes it easier to remove them. The guard's brow puckered. He snuffled, then grunted something that sounded like, Can't meditate here then bent down and hefted the body of the monk onto his other shoulder. Yaquil watched the Gamorrean shamble off, then heaved a sigh of relief. He touched the thermal detonator. Slipping into the nearest guest room, he walked over to the window. He held up the earring and admired the sunlight shining through the clear stone, then set it on the window sill. He opened his pouch. Yaquil cradled the thermal detonator in his claws. He knew just what to do with it. He'd been given a second chance to get rid of Jabba. This time, he wouldn't blow it. And so ends the story of Yaquil, the Wifford. Next time I'll be reading Slate of Hand, The Tale of Mara Jade, by Timothy Zahn. I hope you all stay safe during the coronavirus pandemic, and I hope I give you some entertainment during your self-isolation. See you all next time. Hi everyone and welcome to my latest addition to Star Wars Reading Sessions. I've got a new recording mic now and I've just set it up on a new desk as well. So I'm back to uh, give you some entertainment but this is my last recording which I'd had pre-recorded on my old microphone. So from now on the quality will probably be a little bit step up after this. Enjoy the story.